Welcome. My name is Dennis Kucera. I'm the MPEG product line applications engineer. And for the next several minutes, I would like to step you through a new product from the Century family called Century Edge 2. The key features of this product is the new four or eight tuner module that can be inserted into the unit to provide you a wide variety of RF measurements. Also looking at more than one channel at a time and then finally allowing you to round robin or scroll through a long list of RF channels in an automated fashion. Another important point about this card is the noise measurements, predominantly for most people the modulation error ratio, and in the past we've had high accuracy and in this case we've extended that range up to 41 dB of MER. We also provide a wide variety of RF measurements and we'll go through those when we do the demonstration. And also in the past most of the cable networks have reached up to about 850 megahertz and now several are moving up to the 1 gigahertz bandwidth range and so this product will take us all the way up to 1 gigahertz as well. Also for each one of the channels that you're looking at if you want to see a historical perspective of what the constellation looked like when that tuner was tuned to it or if you lock the tuner onto a particular channel, you can watch the constellation diagram grow and see how much noise there is for each one of the mini symbols in a 256 or 64 qualm like system. So that can be very advantageous for troubleshooting. The platform itself is highly scalable, not only because of the four or eight tuners that you can have installed into it, but also if you wanted to have multiple platforms aggregated or aggregating their measurements into a higher product called Medius. In this case, several of the Century Edge 2 products can be aggregated into one user interface through the Medius. And finally, there are many other measurements that the Century product family has been making in the past, including the video quality measurements. And for most of the people, QAM or RF measurements are scrambled. And for any of those that are in the clear, such as local programs that are inserted into the transport, those will always be inserted in the clear. And so if you option in the video quality measurements, we'll be able to not only make RF measurements, but measurements on the video quality and audio levels as well. The list of features or specifications for this product start with the input signal range. So we don't want to have the signal too hot and burn up the tuner or too cold and not be able to detect it. And so the range that we require is between minus 55 dBm and minus 15 dBm. And then for dBmV, add approximately 50 dB to that number. The three noise measurements that we make are air vector magnitude, and the inverse of that is the modulation air ratio and carrier to noise. And as noted here, the modulation air ratio can reach up to 41 dB. So if you're close to the modulator and not having a lot of noise added to the transmission signal, then we can measure up to 41 dB. Two other measurements, some of my favorites, are the error testing or bit error rate testing for the pre-read Solomon as well as post-read Solomon. And in a cable network, there's always going to be some amount of noise or burst of noise in the signal, and a lot of redundancy is added to make up for that so that packets aren't lost. What we can do with this product is tell you what the error rate is for these duplicated packets, and for any packets that cannot be recovered, we would rely on the transport stream and Reed Solomon to correct up to eight errors or three errors per packet, depending on the standard being used. And then finally, we also measure carrier offset based on the center frequency. So the value of this product is to have a high quality set of measurements that you can use without having the human factor trying to determine how bad the signal is. The precision of these RF measurements will rival a high-end RF analyzer. The density of the card with the multiple tuners will allow you to make several RF measurements on different channels all in parallel. And also you can aggregate or add multiple Century Edge 2 products together to cover a much broader range. And again, as noted before, we can reach all the way up to 1 gigahertz, whether you're there now or going there in the future. So at this point, I'd like to point out the PDF data sheet that's available on the Tektronix.com website and then step into a product demo using the Internet Explorer browser. 
So this is the PDF available from the Tektronix.com website. You can access this by searching through the Century Edge 2 or Century Edge product. And the picture that we have shown here is our one RU device. So it only takes up one rack unit. And it's accessed through a browser. So the display that we have sitting on top is connected to a PC and we can remotely log into the unit. So you can either be three feet away or 20,000 miles away, it doesn't really matter. You can access this from anywhere that you have network access. The measurements that we have in the display here, constellation and behind that table, we'll get more resolution when we bring up the user interface. And then finally, there's specifications and limits on the following page. And so here we have the specifications and the demonstration that we do today is going to be off of a local cable network. So we have a cable system that we've signed up for and so we'll be having Qualm delivered to my desktop and then we'll attach that to the Century Edge 2 product and in this particular case it's going to be of the format Qualm B. We also support Qualm A for the rest of the world and Qualm C used in Japan. So these are the different formats that we use and for today we'll be accessing a Qualm B cable network. All right, so here's an example of using a browser. We're currently using the Internet Explorer from Microsoft, but other browsers are available as well. And the first thing that we have, I'll take a look at the About box and see the variety of options or standard features that are built into this. The key thing here that will differentiate this from another Edge or another product uh, in the Century family is the fact that we've got the advanced RF monitoring built into here. So that's going to be a, a base uh, card that we get with each Edge 2 product. And then we'll go into the status of what we're currently looking at. So the next page I'll look at is the status of the RF tuners and what they found. And based on a previous configuration, which I'll go through at the end, we have a wide variety of RF channels being delivered to my desk over Qualm. We can see in the lower left-hand corner each of the channel frequencies or names that we've assigned to them, starting at uh, channel 14. And the reason I don't have 2 through 13 in there is because this local provider has analog NTSC. So I'm starting at the first digital one that we have. And then if I scroll all the way to the bottom with the browser, we can also see that we're making it not quite up to the 850 range, but uh, most of the uh, 850 megahertz is being used by this product or this cable provider. So we can see the status of which ones we have available, if they are up and being used right now. And in this particular case, there's obviously more than four or eight channels. So of the tuners that we have on this product, in this case, tuners one through, one through eight, all of them except for the first one are being used in a round robin fashion. So I have about 80 different RF channels here, and the tuners are on an as-need basis round robining from one to the next and so on in blocks of eight, or in this case, seven and logging away all of the RF measurements that we talked about in the PowerPoint slide. If by chance you find a problem or an issue on a particular frequency, you can do as I've done here where you take in this case the first channel or 123 megahertz and I've gone in and I specified that I want to park one of the eight tuners on that and leave it there for in this case two hours. So I want to do some in-depth measurements where the tuner is on this particular carrier all the time, not round robining. If I wanted to add a second one, say on channel 32, I could go into this particular menu, select which channel I wanted to park it on. I'll take uh, 32 as I mentioned. How long, how many minutes or hours. In this case, I'll say I want to do it for another two hours or for a particular date and time and say park. Now I've taken two of the eight tuners out and having these two channels be in looked at on a continuous basis. So now that we've got these list of channels that we're monitoring, let's go up and take a look at the measurements that we're making on these. So I'll go to the reports menu, down to RS statistics. And under the RS statistics page, there's a, a bit off the screen here on the right that we'll have to slide to get access to. We can sort these by channel number, by frequency, by power, in this case I can sort by average signal strength to find out who's the coldest or who's the hottest in this case. And the same goes for the noise measurements, the bit error rate measurements, and carrier offsets. So I'll go back to the channel number here. 
and sort so I have the lowest channel. And this particular one is one that I have the RF tuner parked on. And we can see that the average power over the last 60 minutes is 5.55 dBmV. This database can go back whether it be 60 seconds or up to 60 days. So you can archive quite a bit of information, go back and look at any point in time and make that window as wide as you want. So for right now we're looking at the last 60 minutes. If we slide over to the right, we can find out that we do have a few errors on that particular channel. I believe it was channel 14. Yep, channel 14. So for the pre-read Solomon, we do have a, an occasional block of errors that are coming through. But if we look at the post FEC, we can see that we have no problems going on here. Also for the modulation error ratio, we have an average modulation ratio of 34 dB. And then the carrier offset is about 40 kilohertz off of nominal on that. So we have all of these measurements made for each one of the channels. And in this particular case, this channel is being measured continuously. If we go back to the status and look at the block of 80 or so measurements, we can see that since we're doing the round robin, some of the, some of the channels are monitored every minute. And then the amount of time spent on each one may be Let's look at the time between. So it looks like the average time between is about 17 minutes per, and then we have an average length of two minutes. So we can see how often these are, are tuned to. The next thing I want to do is go up beyond the reports and look at the configuration. Actually, let me finish with one other report I missed. That was under the R statistics. I mentioned that there's a constellation. So here under the constellation, we can see the last measurement that we captured here shows each of the 256 qualm symbols and how the noise is impacting each one of the symbols. So in this particular case, they are fairly concentrated and anytime any one of the samples crosses a boundary, you're going to have an FEC or a symbol error, but based on the redundancy in Reed Solomon, hopefully 100% of these are corrected. But if you want to, in a, a subjective point of view, look at the actual symbol distribution, you can do that through the view of constellation here. But more importantly, we can objectively give you measurements on what the noise is and how many errors per second or per hour are making it through the system. So now another important point here is when we do get errors, what should we do about those? And in this particular case, there's a lot of different errors that we can trap. What I'm going to focus on is the RF statistics. In this particular case, I'm going to focus on the RF level. And what I've done in this case, I'll bring up the editor, I've told the analyzer or the Century Edge monitor that any time the signal strength is less than 0 dBmV and it stays that way for more than 3 seconds, and if I can get that problem, for more than three times in three minutes, I want to be alerted. So I don't want to be alerted every time the signal drops. I want to know when it drops many times or is going out. I can do that on any one of the RF channels. I can do it on all of the channels. So in this particular case, I have set up my threshold for the level. I can do the same for bit error rate and noise measurements. And any time this condition is reached, I will send an email message or I will actually receive an email message from this platform and I've been getting messages occasionally due to some noise on some of these channels that are having issues being delivered to my desktop. So that's how we can configure the alerts for the RF and then finally I mentioned setting up the actual input signals. So in this particular case I have gone through the basic cable network and it started with channel 2 and went all the way out to, I think, 100 and 150. And I've gone through and removed channels that I know are in TSC or there's no channels at all. I've renamed that and saved that as uh, DWK Cable TV. And then once I have that saved, this table will be referenced by the tuners and it'll use the, this table and set of frequencies in order to make its RF measurements. So that's how we've configured it. And if you want to make modifications to this, or you want to take advantage of the two different inputs and have two different groupings, 
uh, you can separate the two inputs. I blocked both of them together to go through all, in this case, only 80, 80 some channels uh, as fast as can be with the eight tuners and then round robin once we get to the end. So this concludes the Century Edge 2 product demo and thank you for your time.